I want to address the blurring problem. Mm. Because one of the concerns that comes out of the literature mm. is that for people who blur mm -hmm. uh, impact investing with pure philanthropy, mm -hmm. it is shifting pure philanthropy into that space. Mm -hmm. And as Julia said in the earlier part of this two-part conversation, we still need to maintain a level of philanthropy that isn't getting a financial return. Mm -hmm. uh, are you helping people to, to make it very clear uh, what the choices are and the different endpoints of both of those? I think we would be irresponsible if we weren't, because I think what's implicit in your question and what, what is dangerous is that, and as Julia was alluding to, there are many socially orientated businesses that, were it not for philanthropic capital, simply would not get to the stage where even the most early stage, risk-hungry uh, impact investment vehicle would take the, the blindest bit of notice um, of them. So I think there's, there's an onus is on us as the community um, to emphasize the importance of, of, of both aspects. But again, I think it goes back to helping to educate them on the return, both financial and non-financial dimensions that they can expect from both buckets, if you will, 